Last Monday, we spoke about the case of Emanuela Orlandi, a young girl who in 1983 vanished in Rome, Italy. This young girl lived at the Vatican. She was a citizen of Vatican City. What transpired right after her disappearance took people on a whirlwind. But the biggest conspiracy of all is one that is still believed by her brother to this day, that the Vatican was behind her disappearance. Well, did you know that 40 days before Emanuela Orlandi disappeared, another girl also went missing? And it is believed that this girl and Emanuela were both allegedly taken by the Vatican. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our producers and our patrons. Without you guys, we truly could not do what we do. Your support allows us to do things like buy lights and buy books when we need to buy books. And just so you guys watching know, every month I am taking a part of the Patreon money and putting it to the side to eventually get a much bigger system so we could do even more videos. If you are at the producer level of our patrons and you have not sent me any businesses that you want me to market for you on this channel, then please go ahead and do so. My email address, again, is down in the description box below. And if you are at the $10 and up level and have not sent in an idea for a story, please do so as well. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today on part two of this Mystery Monday, we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Morella Gregory. Now, I ran across Morella Gregori while I was researching Emanuela Orlandi. Unfortunately, there's not as much information about Morella as there was about Emanuela. I believe this is because Emanuela's disappearance came later, and the reason why Emanuela's disappearance had more coverage was because of her family's ties to the Vatican. However, these two girls were the same age, were both Italian, and in my opinion, were both the exact same reason. Now, to start off, I'm going to go over everything I know about Morella Gregori's disappearance, and then we're going to do something a little new. I'm going to actually pull up websites and articles and go through everything with you. You can't talk about Morella Gregori's disappearance without Emanuela Orlandi's disappearance as well because the two do seem to be connected. Now I wanted to divide the girls up in order to give them each their due respect. So this is what we know before we start looking at some of these suspicions and conspiracies. Morella Gregori was born on October 7th of 1967 in Rome, Italy. She, too, was 15 years old when she disappeared. Her disappearance, as I said in the beginning, was 40 days before the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi, and this happened on May 7th of 1983. Now, if you did not watch part one before tuning into this episode, I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you go back and watch part one before continuing with this episode. The link to that video will be down in the description box below. This is because some of the theories around Emanuela's disappearance that are also a part of Mariella's disappearance are pretty complicated and complex. We're not gonna take the time to go through who some of these people are in this episode because we already did it in the part one episode. So please go back and watch that first if you have not. According to Mehmet Ali Agka, 
who again was a primary suspect in Emanuela Orlandi's disappearance, well, not him himself, but his organization, claimed that both girls were taken by the Grey Wolves, which was a party that he was affiliated with, to use both of the girls as a trait. Again, Mehmet Ali Agka was in prison in Italy because he attacked Pope in St. Peter's Square in 1981. Allegedly, these two girls were taken so that the Grey Wolves, the party that Mehmet was a part of, would then trade with the Vatican, right? Like, we'll give you these girls if you give us back Mehmet. Now, Mariella, who was first, she would not have been as powerful of a um, of a trade as Emanuela simply because Emanuela's family, the Orlando family, lived in Vatican City with the Pope and were close to the Pope. Mariella Gregori did not live in Vatican City but lived in Rome. In fact, according to some of my resources, I found out that Mariella Gregori's parents were bar owners in Italy. Now, if you remember from last week, Mehmet Ali Agka did, in fact, state later on in his life that the Vatican was behind both the attempted assassination of Pope John Paul II as well as the abduction of two girls. We also had the story of an elderly exorcist that claimed that Emanuela Orlandi was killed for basically ritualistic abduction at the Vatican. Now back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, this might have been completely shocking because we weren't privy to everything that actually happens at the Vatican. And we do know that this is a legitimate concern. Morelli Gregori, her happened on May 7th of 1983. According to her family, she had a date that night. And the last thing they saw of her was her getting in the car to go on this particular date. And then they never saw her again. Now, then again, once Emanuela had been a few months later, the whole Turkish narrative came out with the Grey Wolves wanting to do some type of exchange. However, later on, we had the claims that the Vatican was behind it. And on December 15th of 1983, a glimpse into this being a reality for Mariella's family happened. Because on December 15th, the Pope went to go visit a Rome parish. Mariella Gregori's mother recognized a man in his entourage to be the man who picked up Mariella at her house the night she disappeared. This guy that's hanging out in the Pope's entourage was recognized by Mary Ella's mother as the man, the grown-ass man, who picked up her 15-year-old daughter for a date the night that she vanished. Now, this man was allegedly Raul Barrielli. There's not a whole lot of information on him. Frankly, I don't think we really need that much information on him because it does seem that this, again, leads back to the Vatican. So without further ado, we're going to look at some websites and go through some conspiracies together. And I do have to apologize because this is the very first time I've learned how to actually share the screen with you guys so we can look at these websites together. So it might look a little sloppy. Hopefully as time goes on, I will get better at this. So this is the first website that we're going to look at together. And I'm going to place all the links to these websites down in the description box below at the end of this video so that you too can go back over this if you want to do a deep dive yourself. So again, this is called Web Sleuths. So this is people just like you and me. We're trying to figure out what happened and we're not actually detectives. So let's go through this. So Italy. Morella Gregori, 15, Rome, the 7th of May, 1983. Okay, so Morella Gregori, born the 7th of October, 1967, mysteriously disappeared from Rome in May of 1983, about 40 days before the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi, a citizen of Vatican City. Both vanishings are unsolved as of today. 
So we're going to get into international events. And this goes back into the whole theory of the gray wolves. Again, if you have not seen part one, please watch that before continuing in this video or else this might not make sense. Gregory's disappearance took place during the Cold War. Both the Gregory and the Orlandic case led to the Grey Wolves, an extremist Turkish group claiming to be involved in the and demanding the release of Mahat Ali Agka. Don't know why it looks like that, but it's Agka. And wounded Pope John Paul II in P St. Peter's Square on May 13th of 1981. According to Mehet Ali Agka's autobiography, The Two Girls' Disappearance, as well as the disappearance of Soviet journalist Olga G. Bitoff, I hope I'm saying that right for the Russians listening, and I can do a deep dive into her as well if y'all want me to, from the Venice Film Festival on September 9th, the same years are closely linked. Circumstances of Disappearance. In different releases of 1983 and 1984, the organization of extreme right Turkish gray wolves claimed to cherish both girls. And I'm going to stop right there for a minute in my deep dive into the gray wolves. I can't say a whole, whole lot because of censorship, but what I know of the gray wolves and now granted, I myself was born in 1983. So I don't have obviously memories of them existing and being really active in the seventies. Now, they're supposed to be like an organization that claims to be almost. And I know I'm going to have to bleep some of these words out in the editing process. However, I'm going to put the words on the screen so you know what I'm saying, just because censorship is real. These, this group reminds me, in my opinion, reminds me a lot of Anthony. But for those of us who are smart and have common sense, right, seems to be the gray wolves were possibly of their day, although they came from Turkey. All right. So actually, the story is more complex. According to a statement by the former officer of the Stasi, the Secret Service of East Germany, Gunter Bonschak, a journalist with the Daily La Repubblica, would be the service of East Germany together with those from Bulgaria and the Soviet KGB to use Operative Orlandi, which has been linked to Gregory, again, the two girls are linked, fabricating false, false communicated from different acronyms, including Turkish Front connected to Grey Wolves, just to divert the parallel investigation on the Bulgarian connection for, for the attempt on Giovanni Palo II, I hope I'm saying his name right. So now for those, again, if you remember from last week, we know that it's basically controlled by this global shadow government. I apologize. I know a lot of words are gonna be have to, are gonna have to be censored, but again, I think you guys understand why, but I think this is really important for us to look at. So we know in the Gregory satellite group shows is a fascist organization with manipulated people that will go out and in order to turn us into a in order to turn us into a fascist country, country you know, the new world order and all that kind of stuff. Well, it looks like from what Mehmet Ali Adka claimed later on in the timeline was that the Vatican was also kind of in control, allegedly, of the Grey Wolves as well, which makes sense because we know the three anchors of are uh, Vatican City, London, and Washington, D.C. So that makes sense to me how all these different narratives could legitimately be pointing to the same thing. And that is that these two girls were a Right, 800 million, or excuse me, 8 million children go missing each year. And sadly, most of those children are never found again. Now we know exactly what happened to these kids. All right. In fact, they have never surfaced concrete elements that could corroborate any link between the disappearance of Morella and that of Anu Emanuela or Landy. So this is people trying to claim that they're not, they're not connected, whereas I believe they're totally connected. 
nor has it ever been. However, certain whether behind the disappearances of Orlandi will be directed by some other person nor related. The two girls, despite being, despite being the same age, were not known or had any acquaintances in common. And that's totally fine. They don't have to have any acquaintances in common in order to be taken for the same purpose. You know, and again, this article was obviously written long before we know what we know now. So here we go. Morella Gregori, youngest daughter of the owners of a bar via Volturno, Rome at the time was 15, was just, so he was 15, was described by all as a completely normal girl and profitably studied at technical school in the capital. On the day of the disappearance, she regularly went to school and came home around 14. Having entertained some time in a bar near her home together with her friends, the later declared that she, she and Morella had talked of this and that could not provide any other information. Back home, Morella was called on the telephone by a so-called friend named Sandro, whose request to leave would have exclaimed, if I do not say who you are, do not go down, and then take time and propose to see each other around that would be um, three o'clock in the afternoon for the Americans, 1500 hours, three o'clock. At that time, the girl actually came out and said to his mother that he had an appointment at the moment to the soldier of Porta Pia with an old classmate who, however, that afternoon was busy elsewhere. Since then, the family has had no news of the girl. It seems that shortly before the disappearance, Morella had boasted with the mother to be able to find the money needed to purchase an apartment and that his parents could not afford. However, this output was dismissed as an adolescent's bravado. The mother of Morella during a papal visit to Rome parish of St. Joseph's December 15th. Oh, excuse me. My note said 1983. That's but They're saying 1985. So it's either the year of her daughter's disappearance or a couple years after recognize a man of the Vatican security as part of the escort Raul Bonarelli, a person who often had his daughter and her friend in the bar close to home. So this man obviously knew the family. She recognized him. And in my research, I obviously told you guys in the beginning that she recognized him as the man who picked up her daughter that night to go on her date, right? As reported by a document slide of the 31st of October, 1983, published novel by journalist Tommaso Nelly on, I don't know what that says, but y'all can read it right there. The daughter of the bar managers located at the time under the house of Greg Rory would be the identity of the current Morella man who convinced to follow him, although they had not had, had in hand for more than a year after its acquaintance. So this kind of sounds like, um, this was written, probably translated into English. So that's why it might sound a little jumbly. Um, so again, to date, the case of Morella Gregori remains open and unsolved. Suspects. So again, here is the suspects. During a visit of the Pope to the Rome parish, and again, the Pope at this time was Pope John Paul II. On the 15th of December, 1985, Gregory's mother recognized a man in the papal escort as the person who came to pick up her daughter at the house. The man was identified as Raul Bonarelli. If we click on the name, this takes us to Wikipedia. And of course, Wikipedia is not the best resource for research. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot on him. I did try to do a deep dive into DuckDuckGo and could not really find a whole lot of information on him as well. So again, to me, in, in my opinion, this isn't super, super, super important um, because, you know, we know he's part of the papal escort and we know from claims of our exorcist friend that they did this for their own ritualist uh, ABUSC that they, they do in these organizations that it, it just seems like she was also taken by the Vatican. All right. So let's look. I'm going to now bring it back a little bit. We're going to look, actually, let's look at this first. So in that article we just read, in that article that we just read, it was kind of claiming that maybe there wasn't as much of a connection between the two girls as some of the conspiracies were saying, right? But I think that there is a connection. And so does Emanuela Orlandi's parents. Now, again, Emanuela Orlandi was the girl we spoke about last week. 
All right. So Pope Francis. So this is the Pope that is the Pope today. Yeah. So Pope Francis, and this is from a, a mainstream media article, guys. This is mainstream media is even releasing this information. So that's a pretty big deal. If the NBC News, for those who don't live in America, NBC is one of our big um, news organizations. So for uh, Pope Francis can help solve the mystery of missing Emanuela Orlandi, the brother says. Over the years, if I can get out of here. Okay, we're just going to have to ignore that video. Over the years, her case has been linked to everything from the plot St. John Paul II to the Vatican's bank financial scandal, which again, we went through that last week as well, the financial scandal. So this article was released on November 1, 2018, a couple or three years ago, definitely during the Great Awakening, as we've now called it. So Rome, the brother of a teenager who vanished in 1983, sparking a decade-long mystery that has gripped Italy, believes Pope Francis knows what happened to her. So Pope Francis would not, was not the Pope in 1983. Again, that was uh, Pope John Paul II. So that says that this is definitely a cover-up by the Vatican if the current Pope is aware of what happened to Emanuela and possibly Mariella um, Gregori. So Pietro Orlan Orlandi said the truth needs to come out about Emanuela Orlandi, who disappeared aged 15 after leaving the family's Vatican City apartment to go to a music lesson. Their father was a lay employee of the Holy See. Yes, again, we went through that last week. Over the years, her case has been linked to everything from the St. John Paul II to the Vatican's bank financial scandal and Rome's criminal underworld. Speculations about her fate was renewed late Tuesday when human bones were found under the flooring during renovation work at the Vatican's embassy to Italy, close to Rome's Villa Borghese Park. Now, we talked about that last week as well. There have actually been lots of bones that have been found in the Vatican City, and none of them have turned out to be Emanuela or M Morella Gregori. Rome's chief prosecutor has been called in and forensic experts are working to determine the age and gender of the bones as well as the date of the death. A investigation has also been launched. Now we know some of the remains were that of like a Roman lady from the second and third century, right? So not at all anybody that is around today, okay? The ANSA news agency reported that prosecutors were focusing on whether the remains could be linked to to either Orlandi, who disappeared on the 22nd of June, 1983, or another 15-year-old girl, Morella Gregori, who went missing a month earlier in Rome on May 7th, 1983. Pietro Orlandi said the possibility of the bones being his sister was painful because he maintains that she could be alive unless a body is found. So that's him today. If Manuela's bones really were found here at the Vatican Embassy, the truth needs to come out after 35 years of silence and cover-ups. Big word there, right? That word, cover-ups, right? Cover-ups. Again, her brother has always maintained that the Vatican was behind his sister's disappearance. He told NBC News, clearly these 35 years weighed heavily on the Vatican's image because there must be something unspeakable something unspeakable in this story again exactly what our little exorcist friend said last week where he flat out said these girls were used i know i have to bleep those words out but it is what it is okay he has long campaigned for Vatican City and Rome authorities to reopen the investigation in her into her disappearance and has met Pope Francis to plead his case. His case. Pope John Paul II, Pope Ratzinger, Pope Francis, I am convinced. So this was the guy between John Paul. Y'all remember that guy? I am convinced that they knew what happened. He said, referring to Pope Benedict by his surname. So he didn't even give this guy enough respect to call him by his Pope name. He called him by his actual name. 
maybe now they can understand that this story will never go away. Those are powerful words. And we're, us on the truther side of this in the great, great Awakening, you best believe this will never go away until the truth comes out, right? We're not, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. Once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. There's no way. Once you wake up, there is no way that you're going to be able to just go back to sleep and go back to the matrix and just, you know, believe the, the bullshit that comes out of our, um, In 1981, again, Mehet Ali Atka. The last major twist in this came, case came in 2012 when forensic uh, police exhumed the body of a reputed mobster from the crypt of the Rhone uh, Basilica in hopes of finding Orlando's Orlandi's remains as well. The search turned up no link. Again, we spoke about that last week too. A document last year that had been stolen from a locked Vatican cabinet that suggested the Holy See had been involved in Orlando's disappearance. Oh, wow. Look at that, you guys. A document last year that had been stolen from a locked Vatican cabinet suggested that the Holy See, so the Pope, had been involved in Orlando's disappearance. The Vatican immediately branded the document a fake, though it had never explained what it was doing in the Vatican cabinet. Like, do they think we're stupid? As Tamara says, as Tamara says, hello, comments. Do they think we're stupid? Do they think we're stupid? What the hell was this document doing in a Vatican cabinet? The Vatican is one of the most secure places in the world. I've been there super, super, super secure. So why would there be a fake document locked away in a Vatican cabinet talking about how the Pope in this case, Pope John Paul II had been involved in these girls' disappearance. Doesn't make sense. The document was re reportedly written by a cardinal and listed supposed expenses used for Orlandi's upkeep after she disappeared. So we know that she was kept alive for a while. The Vatican has repeatedly say, said it will fully cooperate with investigators. Of course, it'll fully cooperate with investigators. This was 2018. Even the investigators were dirty religion it's all the governments it's all the it's not just america it's the whole world they're all freaking corrupt they're all corrupt and even if they're even if there's somebody in this task force who isn't corrupt they're being like by really really powerful people above above all we need to establish the period of death before we jump to conclusions greg burke the vatican spokesman told the guardian wednesday the outcome of the investigation isn't anything that will be known in a few days. It will take some time. But yet again, here we are, 2021. We still don't know what the hell is going on. Okay. So that was Emanuela Orlandi's brother. Again, he has been like the, the forefront of really trying to expose this corruption in the Vatican. Now, I did stumble upon this as well, this little forum, historium. This I thought was super interesting because some new evidence came to light and I don't have anything to back up any. This is just people randomly or anonymously posting things they know. So some of this stuff might not be correct, but some of it seems very interesting. So on October 31st, 2018, someone posted, it seemed bone re remains were found in the Vatican embassy in Italy that may belong to one of the two girls who disappeared in 1903, 1983, excuse me. It has not only been an unsolved mystery, but, will, but also one of the several ramifications, including possible retaliation with the show John Paul II, the Bank and Brosia, and the Banda della Mag Magdalena member Enrico de Pettis. And again, I don't speak Italian, so I apologize if I did not say this correct. We talked about this last week where they pulled up this guy's grave to see if her bones were in there, but they were not. Um, and these obviously were not related to these two girls we now know. So here we go. Now, this is where things get really interesting. It looks like, is that the same person? Yeah, the same person then posted the next day, November 1, 2018. There isn't so much information about Morella Gregori, and that's true. There isn't. But there is a fine documentary with real audio tapes and footage about Orlandi. Only it is an Italian called... Scamparisi 
especially Emanuela or Landy. It seems Enrico's mistress, Sabrina Mindardi, declared the girl had been kidnapped by Enrico's man, men by order of Archbishop Markincus. I think he's an American. We're going to, yeah, I have him up right here. Because the girl's father had been had seen compromising documents, okay? Minardi's version is mentioned around the 37 minute, 10 second mark of the documentary. The girls were. Enrico's organization, Venda della Mag Magdalena, is also accused of attacks against the Vatican to force the restitution of the money they had lent to the Vatican Bank through their bank. It's risk being more bad news for the Vatican. And let's go ahead and look at this archbishop. So basically this, um, um, what we would call mafia guy's girlfriend or mistress rather, saw, knew because the Vatican, let's see if I can explain this from how I understand it. The Vatican had been doing dirty deals with this organization, this mafioso organization. They had been borrowing money from them. They were kind of in bed together. And so these gangsters, uh, from what I understand, allegedly knew these higher ups at the Vatican pretty well. So of course, they were familiar with like Orlandi's father who worked for the Pope. And so this mistress of this gangster is claiming that Orlandi's father who worked for the Pope saw something he should not have seen by this arch archbishop. Again, allegedly, well, he's no longer with us anymore. So it probably doesn't matter. Paul Mar Markinkus. Okay. And so he was an American archbishop to the Roman Catholic Church and president of the Vatican Bank from 1971 to 1983. Now, if y'all remember from last week, one of the anonymous callers that called um, the Orlando's house line, Orlandi's house line, had an American accent, right? And so could it possibly be that they were kind of killing two birds with one stone? Here, the father of this girl had seen something he was not supposed to see kind of like that saying um i could tell you but if i do i have to kill you. So he saw something he should he wasn't supposed to see so they needed to silence him but they also allegedly possibly in the meantime used these girls for their that they hold at the vatican all the time we know about that there's a lucifer room right under the vatican yeah all right let's go down here same person a little bit later that day there are other versions that include There's this dude from last week that was saying that these girls were were the eyes wide shut. So usually at these sex parties, they will R A P E these young children multiple times, and then they'll end up taking their lives. Okay, all for Lucifer. All right, so here we go, November fourth, two thousand eighteen. The same poster posted the article. The Orlandi Code contains a curious episode related to this. If this is true, after the mass, Francis stood at the exit and warmly greeted every person who left. He took Maria's hand and said, Emanuela is in heaven. And then he greeted Pietro. So this is Emanuela's mother. And then that's Emmanuel's brother, who recalls saying to the pontiff, until there is proof to the contrary, I live in hope that she's alive. And I hope you will help me find the truth and answer the Pope repeated. She is in heaven. It also contains a description of how the presumed took place, showing how young girls should be careful about being lured by promises of contracts and modeling careers and not assume because, because a person is well-dressed and has a good car that he or she is honest. And we remember Emanuela or Landy, was allegedly lured away by the promise of being a um, makeup consultant for Avon. So obviously Pope Francis knows something if he keeps telling the brother and his mother that she is in heaven, that basically means she's dead, right? So again, later on the same poster post. Post, also the specialist in this documentary debate, Enigma, 
and it's difficult to understand because it is in Italian. That's the problem I've been running into. There's a lot of stuff out there, but it's all in Italian and the translations aren't that great. So that's what's really hard for those of us who don't speak Italian. So if you're watching and you are Italian, maybe you could fill us in, do some digging for us and, and I can bring you on the channel and you can like tell us more about what you found. All right. So if you are Italian and you're watching and you're willing to do that, contact me and let me know. Seems to suggest that around minute 19, 40 seconds of the police calls mentioning a girl named Barbara with the similar traits of Orlandi could have been a form of disinformation. Okay. So the Italian Wikipedia has much more information. Could it be that the father Gabriel Armoth's version and that Mendardi are compatible with each other. That's what I was saying earlier, right? That the, the archbishop, the, um, Emmanuel's father seeing something he wasn't supposed to that involved this uh, conspiracy, this cover up with this uh, crime organization in the Vatican was seen by um, Emmanuel's father. And also on the flip side, they needed to have some girls for their. On the above documentary, the crim criminalist uh, Francesca Bruno seems to tell something about using a bigger case to hide a smaller one. So maybe all the internal conspiracy scenarios were only meant as a cover-up. I know I'm going to have to bleep that word out. This half of this video is going to be bleeped out because I just can't talk around some of these words to get the point across. But I know you guys totally understand why we have to do that. If I don't do that, for those who don't understand, if I don't do that, it could be really bad for this channel. So... According to an investigative track, Emanuela Orlandi would, would probably going to have to believe all of this out, guys. Yep, y'all can read along, right? A Vatican um, diplomat of a staff in a foreign embassy to the Holy See would have been involved. Other investigators refer to a track leading to Boston. According to Father Gabriel Am Amorth, okay, so this is the exorcist, the young Emanuela Orlandi. In the interview, the exorcist states the following, as also declared my Monsieur Simone Duca, the Vatican archivist parties were organized in which the Gendarme of the Holy See was involved as a recruiter of girls. I think Emanuela is the victim of that tour. I never believed in the international track. I have reason to believe. Also involved was a diplomatic staff of a foreign embassy to the Holy See. Okay, so that's what I think. That is basically what I believe as well. I did want to check out one more thing. I want to see what this is, the Orlandi Code. See what we see here. Okay, so let's go ahead. And this is from the Toronto Star. The Orlandi Code, the Mafia, the Communist Spies, the Pope, and the Twisted Mystery of a Kid. For the first Sunday Mass of his pontiff, on the cloudy day in March of 2013, Pope Francis gave a sermon on the healing wonders of mercy, and he called the Lord's most powerful message. It was an almost giddy time for Catholics. After years of scandal and infighting that shamed the Roman Catholic Church, history's first Latin American pope held the promise of a new era. In the pope's presence that Sunday of St. Anna, 16th century church in Vatican City, Maria Orlandi and her son Pietro shared in the great experience, if anyone deserves mercy, it's the Orlandi family. Maria's 15-year-old daughter, Emanuela, disappeared in 1983, the victim of one of Italy's most enduring mis mysteries for a country steeped in corruption, conspiracy, and scandal. The saga of this young Vatican citizen with the love of music has an absorbing hold. Her missing persons poster, a beaming girl with an AS Roma scooter team headband, resonates like a cultural icon, the symbol of justice denied, of, um, 
of intrigues passionately debated and never fully revealed. The latest judicial investigation headed by Rome's high-profile public prosecutor, Gina Carlo Campaldo, uh, will report by the year's end for Maria Orlandi, only certain it will provide will bring relief. Three decades of no sign of life from the beloved daughter of a is heartache enough. But when the disappeared is linked to cold So basically, this Ardo article is going through everything that we have already talked about. So anyway, hopefully that was good for you guys to look through all these articles. Once again, I will post all of these articles down in the description box below. I'm really sad that there's not a whole lot about Morella Gregori because I believe that every human life has value and every human life it deserves to be shared independently of each other, but it does seem that Manuela Orlandi and Mirella Gregori will forever be intertwined together in their stories. Now, once again, if there's somebody listening out there that can speak Italian, can read Italian, and wants to look at some of these other uh, resources that people like me who don't speak Italian really can't decipher, and you want to come on the show and talk about your findings, I would love that. So please, please, please send me an email at esotericatlanta at gmail.com and we can arrange that. I do wish these families a bunch of peace. I know that for you guys watching, you're probably just as angry as I am. What this group of people, this elite group of people has done to humanity for thousands of years is horrific. And once we move into this new awakening, we will never allow this type of stuff to happen again. Every human life is valuable. Every human life was created by God. No human being should ever have to go through what these girls went through. All right, guys, I'm going to end it here just because I don't know how to close out of this without not saving it to go back to my regular camera, if that makes sense. Again, I'm still learning how to do all the email stuff with you guys. So hopefully I'll get better at it as time goes on. I hope you guys are having a really, really, really good day. Again, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the full opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get out, get this video out to you guys today. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.